to Get Heavy Podcast. Welcome to Gay Heavy Podcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well. What up, what up? Uh, we have an awesome guest for you tonight. My uh, old BJJ coach, John the Rev Jensen. He owned Ojai Valley MMA. Uh, Three-stripe black belt now? Yep. Right? And yep. Uh, bad motherfucker on planet Earth. How are you? Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> thanks, man. I'm doing great. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing good. It's, the, I'm the, so thanks. excited to have you this on. Pod, oh, it's cool to be here. Seriously. This pod would take a completely different turn if you just left one J out of BJJ. I know. And this BJ. is my... Yeah, yeah, it <laughs> this would. Is my, <laughs> this is my... <laughs> it kind of looks like that anyways, right? <laughs> yeah, that's so. wild, man. Well, it's awesome to have you on, man. It's, it's cool, been, cool. It's been a long yeah. time since we yeah. caught up. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been a long time, um, but I I did want to say that if you talk to me the way you talk to Jay, Ooh. I'm gonna fuck you up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that that is not allowed. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. he is very rude and disrespectful. He's mean. Yeah, He's just I mean. I know. I think the fact that he knows mm -hmm. without a shadow of a doubt if he doesn't have a gun in his hand i'm kicking the shit out of him i, I, I think, think he knows the same thing with me yo is yeah it's debatable you know, <laughs> you know? It's you know? Yeah. he just yeah. has to run around the block and you know, know. apparently no, you can't that. do that there's a that. pretty good bjj coach yeah uh-huh yeah if it doesn't Keep go talking if it shit, goes i'm gonna be your bj coach and nobody telling you how to do that <laughs> Why are you guys picking on me, dude? It's fucking because <laughs> you're old a kid. Because he needs some kids. help. He yeah. doesn't need help. Listen, <laughs> I I edit it like that on purpose. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I edited it, it'd be different. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. Whatever. <laughs> that's fine. I'll be very nice to you. How long? Oh, did, how good. long would it take to get third degree black belt? Um, I mean, that's a journey. Yeah. Well, um, it took longer for me, um, because I. I got my blue belt in six months, which is insanely fast. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I honestly, a year, year and a half in, I was tapping black belts out. Yeah. And uh, they, I was a blue belt for five and a half years. Really? And oh, and wow. um, yeah, my my instructor wouldn't promote me. Hmm. And uh, he, he he said I didn't I didn't train in the gi enough. Okay. And I was just like, dude, I'm a pro fighter, you know. Right, I'm not right, gonna be right. wearing pajamas. I I gotta. But uh, it didn't matter if I was training for a fight. It didn't matter. I I would um I would put the gi on and roll with the gi at least once a week, you know. Yeah. Um. But the, I think the biggest thing is I, I um. <laughs> I, he wanted me to go out to his gym. Mm. And I go out to his gym, and there's all these white belts and blue belts that right. I just kicked the crap out of. <laughs> yeah. And I'm teaching them all this stuff, which I had no problem doing. But the only guy in the whole gym that could give me a, a match mm -hmm. was him. Mm. And I'm, I might have made it difficult for him right, a couple right, of times. Right. And so he he didn't roll with me what, anymore. What year was this? Like 90s? I mean, when when were you doing? Because you, have a, you have a wild history. You were yeah. ex pro fighter. You, I mean, tons of time in New Zealand, Australia, right? You yeah, yeah. Grew up in uh, Covina, right? Or Corona, Corona. You yeah, know yeah. What I mean? So, yeah. Um, when did you get into the jujitsu shit? I mean, I was after, thirty. You were thirty. Okay. Yeah, wow. yeah, wow. yeah. I was thirty years old. I, I um, so I'd wrestled in high school and and mm -hmm. a little bit after high school, and I always thought that wrestling was you know, the best martial art, you know, I never lost the fight. It's I just definitely a good base, right? take people down and beat the hell out of them. No one knew how to fight on the ground. And then I saw the UFC and it's just like, Oh, these Brazilians are like <laughs> yeah. wrestling on steroids, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so I start, I started doing jujitsu, um, mm -hmm. when I was about 30 and, uh, yeah, I was, it, it, I've been doing it ever since now. It's, it's a little hard after, uh, yeah. major shoulder surgery yeah. and, two back surgeries and knee surgeries. And, you know, now I'm just a broken down old fucker. You know, <laughs> we're all heading in that direction. Yeah. 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 Whether the father times undefeated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He definitely so. is. The only thing you can't beat, huh? 
Father yeah. time. Right? I've tried, and I'm not, not very good out. at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I wanted to get into like where 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 you grew up because you got like a history in punk rock. Obviously, you're a religious man as well. Where like what was your early life like in in uh, Corona and all that shit going on? So we Let's start at the beginning. We grew up in this little this little town um, mm-hmm. called Home Gardens. Okay. And it's it's part of Corona now, but at the time it was an unincorporated area, and I I think for one or two years it had the highest per capita crime rate in the country. Really, it wow. was it was just this this little teeny town, and it was just gnarly, huh. and uh, you know it's just you know good old fashioned you know white trash and you know a bunch of Hispanic people and uh, mm-hmm. yeah. And it, it was cool. We th- th- these hills, like it's kind. Of, I live in Oakview now, right. and it's kind of similar, similar you know, right. all yeah, these okay. foothills around and stuff. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I, my parents made me go to Catholic school, which was awesome. It was so fun. Um, <laughs> and uh, you said that with so much joy in your heart. Oh man! <laughs> like you had a flashback to getting beat. So by many nuns. people that <laughs> that go through Catholic school come out of it not Catholic. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I, I'm not Catholic. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> I was an altar boy, uh-huh. and uh, you, you're supposed to ring the bells like three times. You're supposed to ring the bells mm-hmm. um, during the mass, and uh, I always had trouble with the first one. <laughs> The, f- the first one, I was just like, I always wasn't sure. And so I missed I missed the first bells. And uh, it was this Filipino priest. Mm. And he comes he comes in the back after the mass. And he just slaps me in the face as hard as I've ever been slapped. <laughs> and he's, you know, he can barely speak English. Just like, bells, first time. And I was just like, yeah, this isn't fun. This is not good. No. <laughs> yeah. And and we got in trouble because we were drinking the wine in the back. And, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. As and you did. did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, I got into punk rock like, like I have friends that, ran away to go see the sex pistols in San mm-hmm. Francisco, you know, right, so right. it was yeah. way back in the day. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I got into punk rock. Um, the, the crown town punks were the guys that I ran around with. Okay. And, uh, they're, they were the only non-Hispanic gang in the Corona police department gang files. Damn, really? But we weren't a gang. We just, you know, we we hung around together and we got in fights and 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 we sold drugs and and. Sure, we sounds wore, like a gang. Oh, I guess <laughs> I, I think I that's kind we of pretty much the list of gang mentality right there. Yeah, no, it, yeah. It, it, Jay has extensive knowledge. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so how that it, works. It was, yeah, we we were um, we were a gang that didn't have uh, colors. Got it. Um, but yeah, it was. It was kind of fun, and then uh, so it was multicultural. What do you mean by color? So there was a bunch of different people of, of different ethnicities that all ran together. No, I mean we didn't wear blue bandanas on our head. Mm. Oh, uh, okay. you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or that the Mexican gangbangers in our in our little town yeah. all had jackets with the you know the scarlets yeah. or whatever they mm-hmm. were. Um, and uh, yeah, we didn't do that. Uh, but the people in the gang were all white guys they were just they, no there there were a few they, yeah, yeah. It, yeah there were some yeah. there were some mexicans There's, i think i think there was only one black guy in our in our group yep. um and he was like my best friend mm-hmm. um so yeah it it was kind of cool but then um <laughs> i started bullfighting okay what the fuck really <laughs> yeah 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 um a portuguese style bullfighting it's the it's the craziest shit you've ever seen um, the, you get in a line with eight people and the guy in front gets the bull to charge and lets the bull hit him right in the stomach and grabs it around the neck. And then they all pile on his back and they really? stop the bull. And how did you get involved in that? Well, I was Catholic school okay. and there was these Portuguese kids uh-huh. that, that went to the school and, and they were doing it. And they, like, he told me about it. I was just like, that sounds like the coolest shit I ever heard of. <laughs> Um, That's so wild. yeah, I saw not my, not how I, I, yeah. Oh no, I was stupid, yeah. you know, not like now I'm smart now, but back then I was stupid <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I skateboarded in swimming pools and all that crazy, okay. you know, like and, yeah. and going to gigs and stuff. Yeah, so, totally. um, yeah, adrenaline, get, dude. getting You're in front of for that. Adrenaline yeah, exactly. Yeah, so getting in sure. front of a yeah. bull in front of thousands of people, it was, that was all fun, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
so yeah, I started doing that and, and that kind of like so many of my friends, you know, went to jail or, you know, some of them died and, mm -hmm. um, and the bullfighting kind of pulled me away from, from those guys. And, yeah. and so it, it, it was actually really good for me. Mm -hmm. Um, except yeah, I got the shit beat except out of me. Bull yeah. Except part. for the bull part. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. really fun. That's so yeah. And, and. So I did. I did that from fifteen to twenty. I was so doing bullfighting. Let me, because you know, as a kid that grew up watching Jackass, you watch these guys fuck with bulls, right? Yeah. And you see him get spun twenty feet in the air. Johnny <laughs> Knoxville got concussions, broke his fucking a million things, right? He had a colostomy yeah, bag for totally. a long yeah. time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. So I mean, have you? You've literally experienced flying through the air because of a bull. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane. Like, of all the weird, dumb shit I've done in my life, like standing in front of a fucking two thousand pound animal is like, or whatever thousand pound animal. Like Dude, that, I used know? to fight to be the guy in front, man. <laughs> they, that, that was like you're in the front. It's like every everyone's watching you, you that's know. Wild. And and you're you're trying to get the bull to charge, and the bull starts to charge. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how many people are there. Mm -hmm. It's chattering in the whole oh, yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And track. then when that bull starts to charge, everything you hear everybody in the stands go, it's oh, yeah. <laughs> the coolest feeling, man. And there's bulls charging down on you and the crowd's holding their breath. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just loved it. So is there a technique to yeah. like wrestle a bull? Yeah. This because, is why you were so good at jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Why. <laughs> so the bull, um, Bulls don't see very well, right? And so they they lower their head, mm -hmm. and they and they try to get under you, right? So you stomp your foot, mm -hmm. and the bull's hearing and feeling in his hoofs is better than its eyesight. Okay. So he puts his head down and tries to hit you mm -hmm. where you stomp okay. your foot, oh. but then you start backing up. Ah, okay. And so he extends a lot of his power right and before he hits you mm -hmm. and you're backing up so you take some of the impacts away mm -hmm. okay and then you know then he hits you and and then all <laughs> all hell breaks loose you know it's crazy but yeah i, yeah. I broke three ribs right over my I liver and uh, yeah. uh i i got i got my in tijuana i i got my teeth knocked all the way through my lip Ooh, and that's fun I didn't realize that there was anything wrong with yeah. me because my friend actually got gored. Oh, it really? It cut his femoral artery in half. And, it, you know, the bull hit me in the face and, you know, I was loopy. Yeah. Um, and I walked in. They, I followed him into the – they have operating rooms in the arenas in, in Mexico. And uh, so I followed him in. They kicked everybody out of the, uh, the operating room except me. Wow. And, and I'm just like, well, I didn't know why they kicked everyone out, but they didn't kick me out. Right? Yeah. Um, apparently, not apparently, when I went to the bathroom, I had blood all over me, you know, so they yeah. didn't kick me out. They thought that I was next, you yeah. know. Yeah. And uh, the doctor cuts Joey's pants off uh -huh. and sticks his whole hand Ooh. in the hole in oh, Joey's man. leg. And then I left. I, was, I didn't want to be there. Yeah, we're good. Yo, hold on. I, let me just uh, unhook my tooth uh, here and we're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so, the That's funny thing glue. was I didn't even know I was hurt at all. Yeah. Like, I, I knew I was concussed. Sure. But I didn't know I was hurt. Yeah. And then uh, I went into the bathroom and I was just like, I got blood all over me. Yeah. And uh, so I washed it off and I got this cut right here and inside of my mouth's feeling. And I was like, is that the? And I stick my tongue, it comes right out. My <laughs> <lip>. <laughs> so, whoops. Yeah. So, did I know like, uh, there's a, and I'm pretty sure it's Bocephus, but there's a famous bull that nobody was able to ride named Bocephus. And he was a, a bronc bull, and they just, nobody, because he just, he could tell and he knew, like, he knew when he was in midair that when he hit, that he would throw his head back. And he broke a bunch of people's faces and yeah, ribs yeah, and yeah. bodies. Yeah. So did you guys have a specific bull where you're like, nah, maybe I don't want to jump to the front? No. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> it's bulls are super, super smart. At least the Mexican bulls are, you know, the yeah. Spanish bulls the, yeah. um, from the Iberian Peninsula. Um, the, the Brahma bulls are 
just nuts. Mm. Um, and but th- but these Mexican bulls are smart, and so you can only really they'd fight them once with the the Mexican style, or mm-hmm. Spanish yeah. style with the mm-hmm. cape, mm-hmm. and then they would fight them our style, which um, th- is on horseback. Oh, okay. But it, you can only do it once, or else they learn what's going on, and they they, they just tear everybody up. Yeah, they'll fuck they fi- you up. They'll figure it out. Yeah, right yeah. Right. So w- we only fought them once, and uh, so we never knew. You know, we never knew what was going to happen. But uh, yeah, we used to say that uh, that real men ride on the bull's face, not on his back. You know. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not telling that to a bronc wider man. Yeah. I'm, I'm oh good. no, no, yeah, those guys yeah, are yeah. freaking nuts, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think it's. Well, it's comparable. You know, it's yeah. comparable. But, I, yeah. I was at I was working at a motorcycle dealership, and some cowboys came in, and this one dude was a bull rider, and he had to have been maybe five foot five, five foot six, and he reached out and shook my hand. And I got big hands, man. I got man hands. Right. Yeah. I felt like I picked up a piece of wood. Like it was so hard yeah. and so calloused and so yeah. rough. And I mean, it didn't feel like, like, like it was like an appendage. An it no, felt no. like you yeah. just had picked up a piece of wood to throw into the fire pit, man. <laughs> That's crazy. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit. You know, this is nuts. Those you know? guys are, they're nuts, yeah, man. And they, they, they get. But so are you. Well, yeah, but uh, they get, they get broken way oh, worse yeah. than I ever got broken. Yeah. So, um, that's wild, man. So what? Uh, so you're a Portuguese bullfighting. You leave punk rock. Then what's where's where are we going next? So um, when I was 18, I became a you know crazy born again mm-hmm. right wing speaking in tongues fundamentalist Christian. Oh okay. And uh, you know, and I I I, I, I sometimes I don't like calling myself a Christian because mm-hmm. I I have such a problem with with traditional christianity church, yeah. Yeah. but uh you know i i still i i still follow jesus today mm-hmm. it's just way different than back then you know mm-hmm. so i got into christian anarchy yeah. and uh christian activism like like crazy activism not you know like holding up a sign at an abortion clinic that's not activism yeah. you know it's it's, yeah, it's like trying to destructive than anything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. trying to do something about like real shit you know mm-hmm. um so once I realized that if there is God and he had something to do with my creation, then I, I'm who I am because I was meant to be who I am. Right. And so if I'm, if I'm loud and angry and, and rebellious and, you know, that's what I'm supposed to be. Once mm-hmm. I got to that point or I could just go, you know, you're just, you're this crazy punk rock fighter kid. Right. That's who you are. Just be that and mm-hmm. be it good, you know? Yeah, which goes against a lot of the teachings of the normal Christianity. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, but for normal sure. Christianity yeah. is just about keeping us all on track of this is what we want you to do. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I've always, I don't, I've been a kind of a non believer for a while. And it's just like, hey, look, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. When I get up there, I'm a good person, I do good stuff. And I do it for my own personal moral beliefs, you know. So if I do get up there and I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure he's going to forgive me because I've not been a douchebag, right. y- well, you then, know. This is the thing. Like, um, so if anyone from from my videos comes and watches this podcast, which which I hope they do, they're they're going to get mad at me because I say naughty words. But um, <laughs> somebody said that the you can sum up Jesus's whole message with. Mm-hmm. Don't be a cunt, right. you know. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. yeah. So to me, that's true. that's yeah. kind of a big part of of what I believe. Um, and I also, you can like, I'll tell you right now, I'm definitely going to hell because I believe that there's no such thing as hell. Um, so, uh, well, there is and there isn't, right? Because there's no way you tell these people in Sudan that they are not in in hell. You know, right? They're right. living in hell right yeah. now, and um, so, but. But I think the way I understand the teachings in the Bible, that everyone gets in. Everyone, even even the shittiest, the shittiest yeah. people get in. Yeah, um, you're in, Kenny. You Kenny, Kenny, you're, you get to you, you get to free come pass. in. The Rev says you can come in. <laughs> and if I say it, you know it's true. Yes, you know. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing. All these Christians think they they're they're right about everything, and it's just like. 
They're not. Well, no one knows I, anything. I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one knows anything until those eyes close, man. You yeah, I mean? man. They, you just it, don't know shit. And man. this is the thing. Um, if I'm if if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. doesn't make any difference, right? 100%. You know, yeah. my my job, in the way I understand it, my job is to make my neighborhood better, mm -hmm. and maybe go outside of the neighborhood a little bit. You know, and my my, my uh, video channel or whatever, if I can help to to mm -hmm. inspire people to be better people. But when like when my church that I had um, in in Long Beach. The chapter leader, the Long Beach chapter leader for Food Not Bombs would come every week. Mm. And you, you might not know this, but they're atheists. No, no, I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I've been to a lot of Food Not Bombs meetings. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and, and the one of the guys who started uh, Occupy Long Beach, mm -hmm. he would come every week. Right. And, and it's like the way that I framed the Jesus story, mm -hmm. they liked it, mm -hmm. right? And I didn't care if they were a... If, if they were a you know, if they were not on my team, I didn't give a shit if they right, were on my right. team or not. As long right. as we're trying to make the world a better place, then we're we're on the same. Hundred percent. Yeah. You know, so for yeah. me, it, it's just always been this way where I I try to. You well, know, see, the, the atheists say that I'm not I'm not a real Christian, and the Christians say that I'm not a real Christian. Right. I, yeah. I don't get who gets to decide who whether I'm not that, a right. Christian yeah. or, or not. Yeah, you know? it's it, the religion thing is a. Because I was, I don't know if you know much yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I was very, very, very religious when I was, right. I, I found the church, like a youth group when I was like 13 to, and I went till I was about close to 18, you know, um, and they have the same type of, for the most part was the same type of beliefs. Like it was a punk rock church. They, you know, people that, you know, the pastor has tattoos and they're rockabilly band and there's punk bands and all kinds of shit in there and it was pretty accepting for what it was you right know what i mean and it was counterculture to the normal belief of christianity yeah which, yeah which i love because i do agree that you know me walking away from the church had nothing to do with me like hating fucking god right i just was i'm tired of the politics every church has politics yeah it doesn't matter who you are you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it's they all do so when i walked away from the church it was just out of uh, frustration of the type of thing that you're talking about was that, oh, yeah, we're going to go build houses for these people in Mexico, but only if they say these magic words to get that house. <sighs> yeah. You know what I mean? And that's where I was like, no, fucking no. Like, build the house. That's fine. And I'm not I'm, I'm framing this in a very simple way. The people that were doing it really were doing it out of love of their hearts. Yeah. But there was an alter alternative motive. It's to convert and to advance their thing. You exactly. Know I mean? yeah. Which is just so if the belief in Jesus is a personal quest, which Jesus died for that fucking reason, you know what I mean? Then that makes sense to me. Like, Well, th you know. this is the thing, man. The, 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 the Christian evangelical community right now, mm -hmm. um, they, they're nuts. Yeah, like, no, seriously, they're nuts. They, they don't understand anything anything but they've about, always been nuts man yeah, yeah but it's it's turned into even like yes they have yeah but mm -hmm. like now it's like this this christian nationalism and it's right. just like do you realize the guy you say you follow was executed for treason right yeah you know what what are you guys doing <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just it's yeah. Uh, yeah it's just ridiculous and so yeah. for me i'm always on the i'm always on the outs um mm -hmm. it's, it seems like i can figure out a yeah. way to argue with just about just, anybody. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, I mean, cause talent. I'll tell you my first impression of you when I started, you know, when I showed up at your, uh, your Academy, you know, and I was like, I this guy's handsome. Very handsome. God, it's it hard to, <laughs> it was hard to roll with a boner, honestly, but you know, I, I managed. You managed. Right? <laughs> Lucky you got no, that but, gut. You know, I, I liked the, I liked you immediately because, uh, you have a no bullshit around you. You also have like you have joy in your eyes. You don't have menace or you know what I mean. Like right, you know, right, I, yeah. I mean, I know you're capable of menace. Obviously, I've seen videos, but um, <laughs> you know, it's, what I what I really appreciated was that like you truly loved what you do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and if you love what you do, you believe what you love, you are going to be a good person, and you're going to shine light. You know, what I mean, even like 
bringing my son into it, who was a kid, you know, a little, little dude. And I couldn't even afford fucking him to come. And you're like, just bring him, dude. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that mentality is so – it goes such a far, like, long way. And it's really – that's when I when I met you immediately. I was like, I, I fucking totally kind of get this guy. You know what I mean? It's Because he's – obviously, like, <clears throat> you're capable of violence. You know what I mean? But you you're not – you're not a meathead and obviously your belief system didn't bleed out into what you do. You know what I mean? Very much at all, which was like, but I mean, as far as like preaching or anything. Like yeah. That, yeah. No, I mean, but it was also like, it was so forgiving and loving anyone that showed up there, you know what I mean? Which was really, really cool. You know? Yeah. It's, it, <laughs> to me, it's a big tragedy that, when you say Christian, mm-hmm. everyone thinks of a judgmental asshole. Totally, yeah. You know, and and it's like, you know, that judgmental assholes. Those are the people that Jesus said were uh, sons of their father, the devil. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, so I, I just don't get it, man. It, it it makes no sense to me at all. Right. Um, yeah, it's 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 a weird thing, and 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 when like. My belief system, mm-hmm. it has it, it did have a lot of impact on my jujitsu school. Okay. But not preaching. I no, wasn't no, there to yeah. try to get yeah. anybody to join my through team. Acts of service, through yeah. kindness, through service. Yeah. Love. And yeah. and loving people right. and, and helping kids to grow up with, you know, just a, a little bit of some sort of foundation. Yeah. yeah respect totally. and discipline yeah, and, right. and one of the things that I taught the kids at my place. Um, it was one of the values and we would take a value and we would talk Mm -hmm. about it, um, all month long. We'd talk about the same value. And one of the, the values that we had, we had six of them. One of them was empathy Mm -hmm. is I'm going to teach a kid how to, you know, break another kid's arm. (laughs) Then I better teach him a little something about empathy, you know? And and so for me and like, uh, standing in a circle, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of yeah. everyone bowing to me. Right. Which I got to be honest, that sounds kind of cool. Pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah totally, but, yeah. but totally. you know, so I, I'm a, I'm an anarchist. I don't believe hierarchy is good for anybody. Mm. So for me, it's just like, you know, these things bled out, right. yeah. but it wasn't, it wasn't. And dude, I've been to so many jujitsu schools where mm. the, the professor Mm-hmm. Is just you know talking about Jesus all the time oh, and totally, blah yeah. blah 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 blah. And, and meanwhile, he's cheating on his wife, and yeah, you know yeah, he's ripping exactly. people off, and he's yeah. charging people two hundred fifty dollars for a right. for a private lesson. And right, it's just right, like, right. yeah, yeah, you're really about <laughs> Jesus Killing there, buddy. Much, yeah. yeah. Totally. So it's yeah. it, it, it's just a different way of looking at things, you know. Yeah. So. But yeah, you always I I fucking forgot about the circle. You know what I mean? That yeah, we always used to do a circle, and you hated yeah. people bowing to you most of the time. I mean, you know, we well, would you all ba- bow to each other. You, you bow know? to each yeah, other. It was yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And and I I freaking hated this professor thing. That's yeah. such a yeah. big deal. Every you know professor. It's yeah. like I freaking didn't even go to college, man. Right. I ain't yeah. no freaking <laughs> professor. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I'm 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 a high school graduate. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, just. Just call me coach, yeah, you know, totally. or John, or you know, a lot of people call me the Rev. Mm. I won't let anybody that comes to one of my churches call me Rev. Mm, okay, you know, because yeah. they might mean it. Right, right, right. I got nicknamed the Rev by the punk rock kids that I hung out with, you know. So they, it's ironic for them. So I get it. That's mm-hmm. cool. You know, did they give it to that. you because of your your discipline and belief? Yeah, because um, I wound up, I wound up doing weddings and funerals and stuff for them oh okay you know and, and so plenty of that i'm sure so they call me the rev and and you know it was it was cool but i'll tell you what if you if you do a wedding and everyone's wearing dicky shorts and and right. dr martin boots mm-hmm. including me mm-hmm. and at the reception the whole thing takes place at the Showcase Theater in Corona. Right. <laughs> and yeah. at the at the reception, <laughs> yeah. Guttermouth, mm-hmm. the Voodoo Glow Skulls, nice. Old Nick, um, okay. uh, yeah, a couple other yeah. local punk rock bands, 
that's play your reception. Yeah, yeah. Totally, dude. Yeah, the awesome. first song, the 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 bride and groom's dance. Mm-hmm. I I got a a cup of beer like <laughs> smashed on me, and I was just like, okay, this is what wedding should be yeah, like, yeah, you know. Awesome, um, so. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool, and and yeah. uh, unfortunately, I had to do some funerals too yeah. and stuff like that. I've done three, four. I've done four weddings, and uh, thank God I've never done a funeral. Fuck. I yeah, mean, I've been to a few, but yeah, oof, yeah, it's rough, man. Dude, my first funeral that I did mm-hmm. was for a, two bikers, mm-hmm. and their daughter was born with her heart on the outside of her Ooh. body, yeah, and she died at ten months old. After countless surgeries right. and trying to, and she dies at ten months old, and that's the first funeral that Ugh. I was asked to do. Yeah, that ain't a good one. No. The second one was this punk rocker who's all into the occult. Oh, really? And killed himself. So yeah. it's just like, okay, you got a baby who's dead and a and a yeah. a suicide. Yeah. Th- those are my that that's how I funerals. that's how I cut my teeth. Yeah, you know, no, I think I'm I'm not doing funerals anymore. Nah, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Man, I'm done, dude. That's, that's brutal. So what was your uh, path like? Obviously, being a religious dude involved in the punk rock stuff, what was your path like into like MMA and UFC and all that? Like Obviously, after bullfighting. After did you, bullfighting. How did you work your way <laughs> yeah, into, you know? Switch to humans? Is that you're what like, well, this, happened? This, this wasn't a hard enough hit. Let me go find somebody that I think maybe Let can me hit me harder. Chuck Liddell, dude. Yeah. See how that goes. I, I, I think... Um, <clears throat> UFC three, I watched live. Okay, uh, not not. Yeah. Li- I watched it on television on live. Yeah. you know when it was happening, Same. Yeah. and uh, so I, I watched mm-hmm. this skinny little Brazilian dude mm-hmm. like take out people, and then um, <laughs> and then Chemo, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> who walks in with this big cross on his back and yeah. stuff like that, mm-hmm. he beat the hell out of Hoist Gracie. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the I only remember. reason he lost is because he had a a ponytail yeah okay and hoist just grabbed onto his ponytail and was able to hold him close to him and eventually he tapped him out with the arm bar okay and uh after getting that crap beat out of him um but i i watched that and i was just like okay one that jujitsu shit's cool yeah and two Beating the hell out of someone in a cage? That sounds like something I want to do, you know? And so, uh, yeah, so, so I went and looked, looked for a jiu-jitsu school, and, mm-hmm. and I, I started training you were in jiu-jitsu. L.A. No, I, I, was, in, I was actually um, living in uh, either Corona or Riverside. I, okay. I was okay. there. Yeah. Still south, they had... You know, yeah, I wasn't anywhere near you here. That's for come sure. up here for yeah. years and years. Yeah, and years, yeah. You know? um, Matter of fact, you might have been one of the second, first or second schools up. Here oh no, 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 no. Valley, there right? were there were some. There was like three or four schools okay. when I got here. I know. Yeah. There, I know. I remember when Marumbu like first came around. Right, and and Marum like well, Paragon's said, actually yeah. been here for a really right. long time. Right. Yeah. Um, so when I was competing in in jujitsu tournaments, Frangino was mm-hmm. already here and had had his thing had in his Ventura, thing, yeah. but yeah. he was the only one. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And you you had to travel if you wanted to train with a black belt. You had to travel. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so I, I signed up for a jiu-jitsu school, and, you know, I, I told my wife that, you know, I, I don't want to fight. I just want to learn this. It's mm-hmm. kind of cool, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, well, I want to train like I'm going to be in a fight, but I, I won't do the fight. And, yeah, and then I, then I fought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, many, how many times did you have, like, actual MMA fights, or was it? I had five fights. Five, okay. Yeah. Um, so this is the way you're supposed to do it. Right. You're supposed to fight 10 guys that you know you can beat up. Sure. And then you're so, you know, so you have a 10 and 0 record. Right, right. And then you're supposed to fight like five guys that are pretty close the to your level yeah. and and then you fight the good guys, you know, later and that's how you build your career. Well, right. I was in my 30s, dude. I didn't care yeah. about no career. I just wanted to So um my second fight I fought a guy who was uh ranked fourth in the world really and uh what was this for like what was it was it what was it for back then it's king of the cages king where of the i cages. fought okay. Okay. um and uh what was his name his his name was david dodd okay, okay. so he had fought in the ufc he, he wasn't ranked fourth in the world he yeah. was ranked 
fourth in the world for the organization he was sure. fighting yeah, for, yeah. you know. But he was a tough dude, That's, you yeah. know. David fourth, was, your, was he a black dude? No, 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 no. Okay. no. He 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 was a uh, he he looked like a jarhead man. He, he I don't think he was, but he looked he kind of looked like he had the yeah. high and tight, and you know, mm-hmm. um, and you know. So my second fight, my first fight, I fought a Brazilian uh, brown belt. <laughs> you know, this is my That's first fun. fight. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and so what, then, what did you fight at? What was your weight? Well, most of my fights were at light heavyweight, so okay. at 205. 205, okay. Um, so I'd walk around at about 220, 225, right, right. and I'd cut down to 205. Okay. And then, uh, and then I, there was this opportunity to fight Dan the Beast Severn. Ooh, and I was really? just like, yeah, dude, give me that fight. Please give me that fight. And uh, so I, I got bigger for that fight so, oh really yeah i <laughs> there's a video. dan severn dude yeah 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 what the fuck there, there's a, there's a video of me walking around backstage uh-huh. and and i'm looking at the video and i'm just like fuck john <laughs> you are yoked man yeah. i was yeah. i was 240 in shape yeah. i was brick yeah. you know yeah. and and then in the video you know walking around and then Dan Severn walks up to me and shakes my hand. Uh-huh. And I was just like, fuck, you look like a little boy. Oh, you know, because he's dude. like 285 and just straight down, yeah, you know, totally. barrel chested, just a dude. massive dude. <laughs> God, damn, and uh, so, yeah, uh, I, at least I, I thought I was pretty big for, right. for, you know, about 30 seconds. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, but yeah, so, so that's I mean, the biggest a, I ever he was. He was a legend. By that time, he, he had already fought. In oh yeah, Pride yeah. He was in the U.S. K one and yeah, yeah I mean, he everywhere got for years. Yeah, he and some of his K one and Pride stuff is insane, man. He won the UFC when it was still a tournament where you yeah. had to fight three, four like times in one times night. Yeah. You yeah, know, um, nuts, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so just getting he's in the UFC Hall of Fame and just getting the opportunity crazy. to fight someone like yeah. that. What a lot of people don't know is he was the second best international wrestler for the United States. Oh, really? I didn't know that. At the time Mm -hmm. that the best wrestler in the United States was a multiple-time gold medalist in the Olympics and the the world championships. Okay. So the best guy in the world was the best guy in the United States. Yeah. And Dan was the second best guy in the United States, but he... He was up there in the top, you know, five yeah. in 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 international competition. He was a freaking monster, yeah. you know. And so, just the opportunity to fight someone like yeah. that, I didn't care about a career. Sure, it's just yeah. like I I fought Dean Lister on. <laughs> I fought <laughs> Dean, Lister. Dean Lister. No, listen, oh, no. I fought Dean Lister on a oh, no. on an hour's notice. No way. <laughs> yeah, an hour's notice. And I hadn't Fuck. trained in six weeks because I I, uh, I was waiting to get knee surgery, oh and so God. I'm I'm working for King of the Cage, I'm, mm. you know, and uh, his opponent, his fourth opponent, because the other three had had quit when they realized who he, who was, he was. That that's when he got his nickname, the Boogeyman, was okay. because of that. And so the the guy weighed in. On Friday night, mm-hmm. and didn't show up on Saturday no for the fight. Oh my god! Yeah, dude. and so he still has to live with that. Well, Dean, see, at King of the Cage, it was kind of like a pay-to-play kind of thing. Sure, you know, okay. you got a little bit of money, but you know, you you made your money off tickets. Sure. Yeah. And he sold like 250 tickets, and all these people came from San Diego all the way up to to the Indian Casino to watch Dean fight. Right. And Dean was a friend of mine. Uh huh. He doesn't. He doesn't have a fight. Uh huh. I was just like, "Hey, Dean, I'll do look, it. man. <laughs> I know all these people came to to watch you fight, so I, I'll fight you. But I haven't trained. I'm not ready to fight you or anything. So you need to. I'll fight you here. Mm-hmm. But you need to give me a, a jujitsu super fight at a tournament or something mm-hmm. like that that I can actually train for. Right. If, if you're cool with that, then I'll fight you tonight. And so on an hour's notice, I get in the cage and and <sighs> go at it with Dean Lister. Yeah. And uh, and I almost knee barred him. Did you? You got and, close, huh? 
Oh, I was. Oh, man. I don't know how close I was. But still, even but I, the I, I go dude, for a for a knee bar, and he tripped out because he's the leg lock guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and you know, I I almost get him in a knee bar, and he actually for a while. I don't know if he still does, but he taught the entry into the knee bar that I did. Mm -hmm. He would. He started teaching it to his school, and he called it the Jensen Roll. Nice, nice, you know? man. So, That's yeah, huge. yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, he's he was a nice guy and um kind of got sick of his uh Arnold Schwarzenegger uh impersonation. Okay. He did yeah. it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like not that's all he did. He didn't even talk in his own voice for a while. He's like get to the job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stop yeah. eating out of people's <laughs> lunches. <laughs> he did it just like you. And it's just as annoying. Oh, yeah. It's just as annoying yeah. when you do it. I, I got it just enough where you're like close enough, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I actually watched Kindergarten Cop the other day, and I thought, fuck, this is a great movie, dude. I fucking loved that movie. <laughs> I fucking was dying, man. He picks up this kid. He's like, it's not a tumor. <laughs> and he's just shaking this fucking kid, dude. <laughs> he rips this lunch out of this fat kid's mouth. Stop eating all the people's lunches. He's fucking yelling at kids. God, what a good movie! Sorry, I didn't mean to see what I got to deal with. John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love yeah. me. Some you know what? You man. could just. I love it. You could do this. Yeah. I'm. I'm not saying you have to, uh -huh. but you could just go. Hey, I enjoyed Ken Kindergarten Cop with uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh -huh. You should watch it. But instead, you decide to you know Ruin do it. the well, movie. You, need a blast you know, and you suck yeah. at it. You uh -huh. know. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I do suck at it. <laughs> Welcome this to the podcast. Really nice. I enjoy this a lot. I know you do. Yeah. I'm sure you do. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know. I came with an attitude he did. just for you, buddy. Yeah, I, know. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's like yes. if you really knew what an asshole this guy really is, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I hear that a lot it's crazy. from people. It's what crazy. an asshole I am. Mm -hmm. That's what I hear. Yeah. I am. Yes, yeah, you are <laughs> watching watching the podcast. That was the first impression I had. That's is that only, that yeah. Jay guy's an asshole? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Craig sure is a sweetheart, though. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm kind of a maniac. I think I know a couple guys just like. That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. It's, what, it's what happens when you grow up an angry punk rock kid. You know? Yeah, yeah. That, that rage is right here. It's on the always surface. right, oh, right at there. At the drop of a fucking hat. So dude. when did you like go? Okay, this is enough, man. I need to figure something else out or, or step out of the whole UFC stuff or mixed martial arts stuff. Well, um, so after I fought Dan Severn, um, I got a offer to fight a, a Japanese guy who was the, um, I, I can't remember what it was. I think it was best or something like that. And he was their, light heavyweight champion and so they watched my fight with dan severn and they wanted me to fight this guy and uh i was on short notice and so i had some leverage and i said okay i'll take the fight but if i win you got you got to put me in pride because they were associated mm. and uh so i i started training to to fight this guy and and like this is my big shot i could go to pride you know and uh, well, I was trying to cut the weight because I fought Dan Severn. You know, I'd gotten really heavy. I'm trying to cut the weight. I got shin splints so bad that if you just touched my my leg, it was just like excruciating. And you know, I I actually worried that I might have uh, stress fractures because it was that painful. Mm. And and I realized that I I just don't want to do this. Yeah. And if it's your big shot right. and you just don't want to be yeah. there, you know, it's just like, yeah. And so I, I called the promoter and, and uh, he, he was really mad at me. <laughs> so, yeah. I bet. Um, yeah. The truth is, like, if I'm being honest, I would have flown to Japan and I got to be in Japan and that would have been really cool. And then yeah. that, that guy would have kicked the shit out of me. You know, yeah. that that's what would have happened. But but you'd have got to fly to Japan. I would have got to go to Japan. You know, and, and who hang knows? Out and... I, I was good at jujitsu, man. Who knows? If I had a, you know, if I accidentally choked the guy unconscious or something like sure. that, I don't yeah. know, fighting in pride, you yeah. know? Yeah. I get the. The opportunity to to fight Vanderlei Silva. Oh yeah. How cool God. would that be? <laughs> Holy shit! Dude. No. Well, it's something about that like <laughs> uh -uh. That, that mentality. Talk about mentally unstable. Yeah. Fuck. That guy's terrifying. Jesus, yeah. crazy dude. But yeah, they talk about all the time like the mentality of you, the belief on top of the skill set you have to have, the belief 
that you are going to fucking be the champion. Like, is a whole realm that, like, I it's just nuts to me, man. Like, nobody you know, can beat me. Yeah, no one, like, that, not a, you, I'm sure you have doubts, you know, but if you start getting to that point where you're like, I don't, I don't want to do this, you know what I mean? Like, I, it has to, like, affect you in a weird, like, that's how I, you know, not that fighting's like music, but that's how I was with music. I was like, I just don't want to fucking do this anymore. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. at that point, you're, everything starts to decline from there. You yeah. Know I mean? um, but I, I still was competing in jujitsu. Yeah. And then um, not long after that, we moved to Australia. Right. And, yeah. I wanted uh, to hear about your time in like Australia and New Zealand and stuff. Um, so I, I never lived in New Zealand. Right. But you've been um, there. Right? Yeah. Lots yeah. of times. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I went to Australia on a religious workers visa. Okay. And what I was doing is I was teaching young people how to start churches Mm -hmm. with marginalized groups in the inner city. And so I was teaching people how to do that. And, uh, so this is the way they were really cool. Mm -hmm. Like they will hire you. And so you can come to Australia and you can work for us and you can train all these kids and be a coach and a presenter and all this other kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and we'll pay you a full-time salary. Um, but you have to raise all, all the money for your salary. Mm. I was like, how do you pass up an opportunity yeah, like that? Totally. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so you're saying basically I'm going to pay for myself. myself to work yeah. there, you know? Yeah. So anyways, what, <sighs> I never got enough money. Sure. And and the longer you stay away from America, the less money's coming in from right, America, right, you know. Right. So so I started um doing seminars and, and teaching jujitsu mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And people paid me by making donations to sure. me. And so that you know, that's how I got paid. Um but I I went over to New Zealand and I did a seminar. And uh, just happened that that seminar I taught, there were um, three guys that wound up starting MMA schools after that seminar, and I changed the way they looked at everything. Hmm. And so you know, they're telling all all their students about the rev and and you know this crazy guy and all his foot locks and stuff and and so i i kind of became this you know noteworthy personality and so um one of the guys not only started his own gym but he started uh, an association of maori gyms all over mm. New Zealand. And yeah. So, yeah, I, I had all this influence, and, and they would just bring me over. And for a while, I was going every two years. I was going to New Zealand. Even when I moved back home, I, yeah. I was going to New Zealand every two years and teaching seminars there. And, uh, dude, New Zealand, man. What a cool culture. Oh, right? That's, like, one of the places I want to see so bad. It, it's such – it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's so green. It hurts your eyes, right. man. It's yeah. just unbelievable. Um, and and th- there's – uh there's hobbits there. Um, yeah. Oh, it, is there really? Yeah, They're yeah, real, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, and then when I was in Australia, um, we, we lived. You in want the, me to do an impression of a hobbit for you? Would that make you feel better? Dude, you just sit there, and look like you do. You That's look all you like have a, to do. You look, you look like, like a, a hobbit just sitting there. Well, you kind of yeah. look more like a dwarf, I think. Yeah, you know? that's it's that's what more. that's yeah. the look I'm going for. As soon I want to be takes like his shoes off. It's evident. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to be the shack of dwarfs, there right? That's what I'm doing. I want to be. Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, we lived in the heroin capital of Melbourne, mm. um, in this, this, uh, inner city suburb. And that people was... do, so uh, Australia and New Zealand, both of them, their, their ghettos, whatever they call them, or, you know, but their ghettos are not, they're just the same as they are going into Watts. They're just the same as going into some of the like. They are just ludicrous. Nope. <laughs> See, so then, <laughs> not at all. The stuff that I've watched, those guys are out of their fucking mind. Yeah. What stuff did you watch? 
just watching documentaries on TV. I get, get getting into a track on different biker gangs and stuff down there. Oh and, no, no, no. There, the there are some. Stuff. There are some biker gangs. Um, the the biker gangs in in New Zealand are actually a little bit. Well, I don't know. The, the, in the, Australia, they're crazy. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of Hell's Angels in Australia yeah. and stuff like that. But but the ghettos, you know, they, they're they're just different. And um, after the Port Arthur massacre, yeah, they basically just got rid of guns. And so yeah. like if you're in a in the mob, you mm-hmm. might have guns, right, but right. like no like kids, punks, you know, yeah. g- little gangs on the street, they don't have guns, no. you know. So. Walking around Footscray as as a badass cage fighter, dude, I wasn't scared of anybody, you know? Right. I could walk down the street in the middle of the night, no problem. My kids could walk around on the street. And this is the heroin capital of Melbourne, and, and we weren't worried. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. We actually lived in the in the um, the neighborhood that uh, the real-life romper stomper events happened. That's the neighborhood we lived oh, really? in. Oh, really? But that, had, that was the past, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so So... It was, uh, it was, dude, I loved it there, yeah. man. It was yeah. so cool. I was really upset that we had to come home. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, got to do some crazy, some crazy stuff there. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I spoke at a youth conference with 4,000 kids. Oh, wow. That's um, cool. and, uh, yeah, that was, <laughs> um, they wanted me to do an altar call. Oh okay. And I was like, I don't do that. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you got to do, you know do what an altar call. Is? <laughs> no. Okay, so an altar Explain call is <laughs> is when you uh, you say, okay, who wants to become a Christian now? Right. And you come up to the front, and I'll pray for you, and and then, poof, it's magic. Yeah. You get to go to heaven okay. when you die. You say the magic you know? words. And um, now and, you get to go. Uh, right. yeah. yeah, I didn't believe in that, and uh, so they said, okay, you don't have to do an altar call, but you need to do something. That you know, they allows people to make a decision. Um, so, so I, I handed out uh, sheets of newspaper to everybody who came in, and I told them, "Okay, look, man, this whole thing, this whole Jesus thing, is about being a good neighbor. Mm. This is local ner- newspaper. So, if you want to make a commitment to do that, I want you to take that piece of paper. I want you to." fold it up into a, into a little square and I want you to stick it in your shoe mm. and leave it there. So that it, it reminds you all the time. It's bugging you. It reminds you what, what you said here today. Mm. <laughs> so as I'm doing this, the, the, you, you know, this terminology, the mm. worship leader mm-hmm. comes up behind me with his, with his guitar and starts playing softly. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dude i'm such a dick i turned around and i go um could you not do that please <laughs> and he's just like oh, okay to create this moment yeah yeah, yeah. Totally. Was like, yeah. yeah. It's a whole i hate manipulation um yeah. Yeah. so yeah so it, it was a great it was a great experience i got to do some some pretty cool stuff and uh but they didn't renew our visa mm. and my my kids would have had to pay um, overseas fees to go to college oh, and yeah. so oh. it's just like they're outrageous yeah. you know if yeah. you're if if you go mm-hmm. if, if you're in australia if you're an australian citizen you, you can yeah, go you to for school free. for free right, you know right. but yeah um we couldn't afford it so we, we had to go home mm-hmm. um yeah um so it was kind of a drag is that where you got involved with the tsunami stuff in Australia? No, no, no. Tsunami. What is, what is that? I, yeah, I was always a little unclear. On okay, so when I I was in the Carlson Gracie right. team. Okay. And Carlson Gracie's first American student was a guy named John Awano. Right. John Awano makes the Awano geese. And right. so he started his own uh, jiu-jitsu association. Okay, got it. And that's called Tsunami. Okay, got um, it. Which I think, you know, that's a great name, you know, a, a natural disaster that kills tons of people. Yeah, that, let's let's call ourselves that, you yeah. know. Um, so, but yeah, I I like John. Yeah. And he's a big supporter of mine yeah. over the years, and, and he's a great teacher. And so I, I didn't want to be in one of those crazy 
associations where right. it's just so political and John's yeah. not like that at all. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, because I, I, I know when I was there, he came over once or twice maybe. Yeah, the, yeah. he came to our belt promotion. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, yeah it was crazy. <laughs> You're like, and then Hanan was... So Hanan, yeah, Hanan I, was fucking that guy. Was nuts, dude. Jeez. Or, or Carl, the wrestling uh, Carl. Yeah, Carl. Gee, what happened to that guy, dude? Is he, he still around? He started a, a wrestling mm-hmm. school in Oxnard. Okay. And he had like over a hundred. Really? Kids. He was a fucking <laughs> savage. That guy. Dude. Was he still doing it? Yeah. 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 In Oxnard? No, no. I think he, he's not in Oxnard anymore. I don't oh. think. Mm. Um, he's. Yeah. Uh, I got, yeah, a, I don't know. I got he a might nephew be... that needs uh, that he would he needs to dance what he needs to do. Man. Dude, yeah. this <laughs> he needs to. Yeah. yeah. I like when I was wrestling, um I, I would go to uh you know, seminars and camps and stuff like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And I learned from Olympic gold medalists. Mm-hmm. And I can without any hesitation say that Carl is the best wrestling teacher he was I've early, dude. ever wow. been with. Because it's so crazy when we were up there, it was like, you know, he's he, it's his place, but then you had Professor Hernan that would come in. Yeah. H- am I saying that right? Hernan. Hernan, yeah. yeah. And then Carl was doing wrestling classes. It's this tiny little spot, and you're like, these guys are fucking killer. Like, yeah. true killers. Like, I, no, no, I, I was pretty good oh, at I know jiu-jitsu. you are as well. Yeah, but, yeah. but, I was wrestling with Hanan and Beto, who's in Villanova. Mm-hmm. I was right. wrestling with those guys every week. Right, right. And uh, I started just thinking I didn't deserve to have a black belt. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. just kicked the shit out of me. And I was just like, yeah. oh, man, maybe maybe I shouldn't be a black belt, you know? And <laughs> and then I, I talked to Hanan about it. And I was just like, dude, I, I mean, you guys, you don't even get tired. You just right. kill me. And he goes... John, how old? I I don't do a Portuguese yeah, do uh, Brazilian accent anymore, but you know, he's just like John. How old are you? Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm fifty three, mm-hmm. and he's like, John, I'm thirty two. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thirty two, yeah. and yeah. I I get medals at the Pan Ams, right? Yeah, totally. You know, crazy. he's like. The fact that you can wrestle with me at all says that, you know, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and he's like, you are a black belt. Um, and then I I do seminars all over the country and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I'd roll with other black belts and I did, I did fine. Right, you know? right. So it's like, yeah, but, you know, God, he just kicked the shit out Dude, of me. Dude, he was so gnarly. And then the first time that, like, Carl met me at the coffee shop. hmm and he says, do you, do you have that school over there? I was like, yeah. And so we started talking. He's like, I'd like to start teaching some wrestling. And I was like, yeah, man, I'd love to have you. Mm-hmm. And so he shows up at Open Mat one day. And he goes, he goes, hey, come on, let's let's wrestle. And I'm just like, well, you know, I haven't wrestled in a long time. And he just grabs my arm and drags me onto the mat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. He yeah. just yeah, was crazy. so yeah. good. And yeah. not he's not only like technically brilliant, yeah, but he's a freak too. Yeah, you know, totally. he can do one arm pull ups yeah. and he, you know, he's got the short legs and long arms and he's like yeah. you know, that you make wrestlers on, on the computer. Yeah. So it's, it's Carl, like what you would you know? think yeah. a wrestler looks uh, like. Our high school <laughs> coach in in at Channel Islands in Oxnard, I had the wrestling coach. The perfect description of him. I mean, he just didn't, not really. He didn't have any legs, but he had the craziest upper body, yeah. knuckle dragging, just as huge, but not much in the leg department, you know. But he was just so fast and technical. And well, well Carl has has yeah. really muscular legs, yeah. but they're just short. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, and he <laughs> he looks like Jason Statham. Yeah, he really he does. He, he look really exact, looks like now Jason that you say Statham. that he looks exactly like. Yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, learning from him, like, my wrestling got so much yeah. better just learning from him, you know. And I I was a good wrestler, but, man, I yeah. did. So, yeah, I got my ass kicked all the time. Yeah. Well, uh, that's, like, why I thought that place was cool because it was, like, a obviously you uh, and then a wild pedigree. But then the way that you taught, I thought, was rad is that you taught from a self-defense standpoint, which I think was really, really helpful for a lot of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we would 
you would do make us do drills and then like okay now act like you're punching him in the face now that you're on top of him you know what i mean it's yeah. like or act like you're trying to defend like right, a right. face punch it you know so he taught from a, a self defense standpoint on top of the basic fundamentals of stuff you know but um and then with incorporating wrestling into it and and everything else it was like a cool well-rounded you know, thing that you would, you would well, do I think one of the things that kind of set me apart from a lot of the other guys because mm-hmm. uh, the jujitsu guys, I'm never going to be as good as some of these guys sure. at jujitsu, but um, I was a wrestler too, mm-hmm. and I understood catch wrestling, which right. is wrestling with submissions. Mm-hmm. Um, so the problem with catch wrestlers is in catch wrestling, if you pin the guy, the match is over, mm-hmm. so people won't go on their back. Mm-hmm. Well, jiu-jitsu guys, just, they just roll right over on their back and spread their legs like Brazilian hookers. You know, they don't really <laughs> yeah. care. So a lot of catch wrestling doesn't work right. when people just roll on their backs. Yeah. Right. And so uh, because I was a jiu-jitsu black belt and I understood catch wrestling, mm-hmm. I could blend them in a way that actually worked. And so a lot of the stuff I did was catch wrestling uh, yeah. you know, remixed for jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah. So, it, was, it was a cool, unique, like way to look yeah. at it you know i didn't have any other frame of reference but when i was there i was like this is fucking cool man you know you, you come in every time and you have something that you can at least think about for the next week yeah you know yeah, I mean? like, yeah you're like fuck and that's yeah. if you're paying attention you know but and i i i would i loved when you would come in you know you'd have your beard and a braid or something <laughs> yeah. this is cool Dude, I had no idea yeah yeah, I yeah. No idea and i saying. didn't have a beard back then yeah. i don't think did no, I? no no you had yeah. some scruff that was it yeah you looking nearly as epic as you are now yeah well you know i i i went i went through three years of just absolute shit right, right? i right. was depressed and and uh co- constant pain mm-hmm. and and yeah i, I was uh I'd, I'd been taking pain pills for five years. Right, so, right. you know, I was just like, I, I was addicted to the pain pills and, um, and, and I got chronic fatigue syndrome, mm-hmm. which is just cr- crazy, yeah. you know? Um, so I, I was just in this, in this, um, real kind of shitty, uh, kind of place. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I just completely lost my train of thought. Well, we were talking like a couple of days ago, like that you went through something that kind of helped you find your spark, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I got it back, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. But I, a bunch of really cool things happened all at the same time. But mm-hmm. I, I was I I talked about the the crap time for a reason, but I mm-hmm. forgot what the reason was. So, um, do you, you might not know this, mm-hmm. but I used to get smashed in the head a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell, man. Couldn't tell at all. Yeah. I would have for, never guessed. I forget shit. The one, the, the one eye crossing every yeah. once in a while on its own times a dead giveaway. <laughs> or, or look, if I tilt my head back, you can see that yeah. my nose isn't on right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it just it's all fucked it's, up. It's hanging around. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so. That's all good, man. No, it's cool. I. I mean. I just, I really did, I valued the time that I got to spend with you, man. And I, I oh, really, thanks. really appreciate thanks. it. You know? Yeah, I, it, I loved it, man. It was kind of like my church, you know, because yeah. uh, yeah. I'd stopped, I, I'd stopped having a church and, and, uh, it was my community, right? right? I think that's what church is supposed to be. Totally. 100%. You know, and yeah. so yeah. it was my community and, and I got to love people and I got to teach kids right. and, and teach adults and, um, yeah, I just loved it, and and everyone was so cool. Yeah, and then um, and then COVID happened. Yeah, COVID was a fucking nightmare. Dude. Yeah, yeah, man, that's so. the worst. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. That's yeah. I was, and, and, I was bummed and, to see you close the doors, man. It yeah, it my sucked. Soul, you know, you know it it, sucked. after I moved out of Ohio, I was like, fuck, man. It's the one thing I missed in Ohio was that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just Feasible. Oh, I know what I was gonna, oh, say. We gonna say. I remembered what I was gonna was say. It, was it gonna be mean? Were you gonna be mean to me? So, no. I will hold on. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I haven't. I hadn't worked in three years. I'm trying to figure out. Okay, I need to make some money. You know, my right, wife's. Yeah. You, you know, uh, you might not know this by looking at me, mm. but I probably don't fit the trophy husband kind of thing. You know, <laughs> so I, have uh, you seen us? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not one of us has ever got trophy for being a husband. So, <laughs> so I, I was like, I need to do something to make right. some money to help yeah. out. You know, yeah. um, and. Uh, 
So I decided I was going to be Santa Claus. So I, I grew my beard out to be Santa Claus. Yeah. And then I realized that having kids sit on my lap and piss on me probably wasn't something <laughs> so that I would be very not, good not about. Not fun. You know, so I, yeah, I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but I didn't change the beard. I, I just yeah. decided to keep growing. I'm going to see how long it goes. Are you uh, going to keep going, huh? I want to go until it stops. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Until it stops. <laughs> Awesome. Well, let's get in. Uh, what What is it that you're doing now? Because you're doing some pretty interesting stuff with your YouTube channel and stuff like that. So why don't we develop on that a little bit? Like, tell everyone what it is you're doing right now. Um, so I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to to teach the Bible from a from a perspective of, um, well, what I what I would consider a Jesus perspective. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, caring for the poor and the marginalized, you know, standing against the religious elite, standing against the political elite, standing yeah. against the economic elite. Um, and, you know, to me, the way I look at it is Jesus came to show us a new way of being human, mm. a better way of being human. Um, you wouldn't know that um, by a lot of the Christian shit that happened. Um, you know, I mean, there's good things in Christianity, course, yeah, you know, yeah. like the Crusades and the yeah, Inquisition, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, good, good All stuff. Those yeah. Priests, yeah, 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 kids yeah, and, yeah, yeah. There's good yeah. stuff, there's but good you know, stuff, yeah. there's a lot of bad stuff too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just i i wanted i want to show, you know, i i believe that that Jesus was an anarchist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe that anarchy is woven through the entire bible you just how do you have to mean how do you mean jesus was an anarchist because anarchist the blanket thought of everyone is no, no rules, gods no, no rulers no, yeah yeah no, no gods no masters no right, fucking right. rules okay somehow so, society is supposed to survive with everyone on their goodwill you know what i mean so explain what you mean by that okay so jesus is the king right that the, the, the no, he might not be the king, but that's what the Bible says. Sure. The king, yeah. king, 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 king. Right. And he talks about the kingdom of God. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize is that that's not actually the words, not kingdom. Right. The words empire. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause he's, it's like right in the middle of Rome. Um, but what's a king like? A king forces people to do what he wants. Mm -hmm. A king takes slaves. Mm -hmm. A king, asks you to die for him. Right. Jesus did, he, he turned the whole thing upside down. Mm -hmm. And when his disciples came to him and said, hey man, like, I want to be on your left hand and your right hand. I want to be your, your right hand man. You know, I want to be your vice president. Um, Jesus said, look, that's, that's what, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. These people have power over you. And they, even when they're good, mm. they, they have power over you. Um, it's not supposed to be like that with you. Mm -hmm. If any of you want to be good, you, you should be um, a servant of everybody. Mm. And if any of you really want to be the best, you should be a slave of everybody. A slave mm -hmm. of everybody. So Jesus took the the language of empire and he turned it upside down right right so when you think of uh you know oh well no gods no rulers well god right um if you if you understand the bible the way i do right mm -hmm. which is of course the right way <laughs> if if i thought it was the wrong way of course i would change of course, you yeah. know but um you know you haven't found it yet though not the wrong way yeah. we, what's interesting <laughs> is i keep realizing that that what I believe is the wrong way. And then I changed the right way, mm. but then I find out that that's the wrong way too. And I keep changing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. but so the way I look at it is, you know, okay. So God, right. Mm. The creator of the entire universe, the maker of mankind, the, the spark in, in humanity, mm -hmm. all of that shit. Does God force you to do anything? Right. Now, if you threaten with hell, like, okay, if you don't yeah. do what I say, you go to hell. I don't think that's in there. Hmm. Right? So does God force you to do anything? No. Hmm. So Jesus comes and he's like, he's like, eh, instead of telling you to work for my benefit, hmm. 
I'm not going to take anything from you guys. Mm. Instead of hanging out with the elites, I'm going to hang out with the poor and the marginalized. Mm. Instead of asking you to die for me, I'm going to die for you. Mm. So it's this idea that you take, um, you take this understanding of hierarchy and you turn it completely on its head. Right. So the first, like the, the rich, the rich mm. bastards that are ruling everything, mm. they, they're actually the ones that you don't pay attention to. And yeah. the people that are considered the least, the, the shit bags, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the, <laughs> the white trash, like I grew up, yeah. you know, they become the, the ones that you really, right. There, there's a, um, there's a story that Jesus tells where he, uh, he says that, uh, a, a vineyard owner goes out and he needs workers. So he goes to the town square and he gets some, some guys and, and he says, you know, I'll, I'll pay you a day's wage. And then he goes back a few hours later and there's still guys there. And he says, okay, you come with me. I'll, I'll, I'll. I'll sort you out at the end of the day. And then he goes back and he goes back and he goes back. And until at the very end of the day, he has people come out and they work for an hour. And at the, at, at then when they're all done, he pays everybody a full day's wage. Hmm. And Jesus says, that's what the kingdom of God is like. Now, when we look at that, we don't, we don't, fucking, we don't know what the hell he's talking about. Right. Yeah, I'm just mad that that guy only had to work an hour. Exactly. And that's what, <laughs> that's the story. The guys I'm get pissed. all pissed, pissed off. This yeah, guy I'm didn't want to, you know, well, imagine you're at Home Depot hmm. and you pull your, your truck up. I, I, I need three guys. Well, who do you pick? Hmm. What three guys do you pick? Well, the guy who speaks English, mm-hmm. uh, the, the young guy who looks really fit, mm-hmm. you know, you don't pick the fat guy. You mm-hmm. don't pick the old guy. You don't pick the guy that you can't speak to in English. Right. You pick the people that are going to be best, right? Mm-hmm. Well, at the very end of the day, who's still there? People that really want to work, that need right, to work right. for their families, but everybody all day long rejects them. Mm. No, I don't want you. No, I don't want you. At the end of the day, this guy goes back and there's still people. They're sitting there trying to do something to bring just a little bit of something home to their families. And he takes them. And he not only takes them, but he pays them the same as the people that are the strong, the the charismatic, the ones that speak the right language, the ones that aren't foreigners, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. He pays them the same. So to me... That is anarchy, man. It's turning the whole fucking okay. system upside yeah. down. And so that's the way, that's the way I think. So I'm I'm doing a Bible study mm-hmm. through the Gospel of Matthew. I call it Mondays in Matthew where I where I look at the 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 actual words in the Bible mm. from a perspective that I think is is a, a correct one, you know? Yeah. And then um, on Sundays, I tell, I just tell stories about yeah. shit that I've done in my yeah. life, you know, and, and uh, most of them are about, you know, Christian stuff that I've done, but a lot of times I'll, I'll talk about just, you know, just yeah. stuff, yeah, you know? Totally. Uh, I, did you listen to the one where I, I went to the Maori funeral? I listened to the, yeah, hand, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I actually sing the Dropkick Murphy's worker yeah, song totally. in it, you yeah, know, awesome. and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. that's, um, yeah, it's beautiful, man. Yeah, so it's, and and I'll tell stories of bullfighting and stuff. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll just tell stories that have nothing to do with God. But yeah. to me, the, the the idea is that if if your faith is just some esoteric theological pie in the sky, mm-hmm. uh, you know, f- fire insurance, mm-hmm. then, fire insurance. Then, I like yeah, that. Then what the awesome. f- what the fire fuck insurance. good is it? Right? Totally, yeah. You you're of no good to the world. Right. Right. Well. Yeah. If your faith actually means something and you actually do something about it, mm-hmm. um, then you should have stories to tell. Right. Right? Yeah. And 100%. and so, yeah, I, t- I tell stories Beautiful. about taking in homeless people and, and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And um, my wife and I have been doing this work for our whole lives. And, you know, well, you know, yeah. I, I'm not trying to convert you. No, you know? I, know. I, yeah, I just no, want to be a good guy, yeah, you know. Totally. So um, on YouTube – it's uh, it's John the Rev, 
Jensen, mm-hmm. and that's that's the channel. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm I'm doing that every week. I put two videos out every week, and then you know on Instagram yeah. and stuff, I'm I'm just putting in one minute TikTok videos. You know yeah. to to yeah. you know say. Hi, I'm here. Yeah. Hey, I'm, yeah. I'm John. I'm cool. Yeah. Come listen to my Bible study, totally. and then give me money on Patreon. Yeah, you know, because totally. you know, if you're a preacher, you got to ask for money, right? Course, you you yeah. just have to. Yeah. So you know, that, I'm doing that too. They wouldn't you believe you if you didn't. Yeah, yeah. Totally, exactly. Well, fuck, dude. It's been beautiful having you on, man. I really, oh, really well, thanks, it, thanks. Yeah. I, I can't believe it's already over, uh, dude. Yeah, we hour and a half almost. So that went by quick, huh? Well, you're you're the producer guy. Did did Jay say anything? Did he say what yeah, four the, words the whole time? The nicest podcast I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, yell at somebody. You you say the fucking it? this and that. You know, Go do ahead, something. Man. Why don't you take this one? Go ahead, light somebody up. I was up. just really enjoying our conversation. So was I. It was really nice talking to an adult. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not used to that. <laughs> I'm used to dealing with children, and so it's been really enjoyable listening yeah. to an adult speak. You know, well, I I haven't seen. Do, do you ever? Are you ever on the podcast when Rosie's in here? No, no, we, we have done it once, wife. but yeah, he doesn't like me. Being no, I don't her. like him near. She he doesn't like the way she looks at me. No, yeah, I yeah, don't like the fact empty. that he's constantly saying shit to her about me. He's he steps lines that are wild. Oh, really? Yeah, it's honestly oh, is a problem. Yeah. So. I'm yeah. going to fucking end it right there okay. before I lose it. How's that? <laughs> Has everyone got what they want? Huh? <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you on, brother. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks Love for having man. me. All yeah, right. cool. Right. Bye, guys. Bye.